So you want to go to Amsterdam, but you don't know what to do other than visiting coffee shops in the red light district? Don't worry, there's coffee shops in other neighborhoods too. Anyways, I'm Marco. I'm Alex. And we are the Vaga Brothers. This is your go-to guide for travel tips, vlogs, and inspiration here on YouTube. So if you're a new viewer, please do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and enable notifications, and let's get into it. This is Top 10 Things to Do in Amsterdam. Number one, rent a bike. The Netherlands is the most bicycle friendly place on the planet and the best way to get around Amsterdam is on two wheels. Now the city is connected by these little bike highways and you can literally get anywhere in the city on a bicycle, but be careful and be warned. Dutch, extremely friendly as they are, will not tolerate people effing around in the bike lane. Number two, the red light district. Okay, we know that your entire plan revolves around smoking a Dutch tulip, sitting in a coffee shop, watching the ladies of the night beckoning you from across canals, but there's so much more in Amsterdam than that. Anyways, locals don't do either of those two vices, but the red light district is the historic core of the city. It dates back to the 17th century, when the Netherlands, and Amsterdam in particular, was the hub of global trade. So there's tons of canal houses, tons of history, if you can wash away that smoke cloud and get out and explore the city. You're not supposed to smoke in public. There's tons of rules around it. You're supposed to do it in private or in the coffee shop. So if you do smoke weed, read the laws and be respectful. Also, just to clarify, there's coffee shops and then there's cafes. So if you just actually want a coffee, do not go to a coffee shop, go to a cafe. Because they don't sell coffee at the coffee shops. Well, they might. They don't. Probably do. They sell the spliffs, man. <laughs> Number three, the Van Gogh Museum. Vincent Van Gogh is one of the most famous Dutch painters. He's an impressionist, and he's also my favorite artist, as you may be able to tell. Regardless, the Vincent Van Gogh Museum is an essential stop for any visitor to Amsterdam. It's a three or four story cube building that is full of Vincent's artwork, his personal letters to his brother. It really does give you a very in-depth look into Vincent Van Gogh's life and the things that kind of influenced his artwork and ultimately his tragic end. Number four, Museum Plein. More sober minds might actually like looking at museums and in the Museum Plein, which means Museum Square, you're gonna have a couple of great options. First up, you got the Rijksmuseum, which has tons of Rembrandt and the Dutch masters who are famous for landscapes and still lifes. Around the corner, you also have the Stedelijk Museum, which is the modern art museum. And there's a really cool grassy area that's kind of at a slant that's perfect for watching the sky or having a picnic. There's also the I Amsterdam sign, which is an essential selfie stop for any visit to Amsterdam. If you want some real artistic inspiration or if you're just looking for a place to chill out, head over to Vondel Park. It's basically this beautiful expanse of ponds, willow trees, and it's just a nice little area of green right in the city center. <laughs> This beautiful 10 acre park is right next to the Van Gogh Museum, so why don't you just combine the two into an epic afternoon? All right, number six is Ode West. This is one of the most diverse neighborhoods in Amsterdam. It's a really cool place with tons of great food, coffee shops. Cafes or coffee shops? Cafes, I mean cafes. There's cafes, I'm sure there's coffee shops there too, but it's just a funky part of town. And if you want to kind of live life like a local, I think this is one of the most accessible neighborhoods to get into. There's also a really cool spot called the Food Holland, which is a food hall. It opened a few years back, and it's got a bunch of great pop-up restaurants, so this is kind of a destination in itself. One of my favorite types of food that I didn't even know existed is Surinamese food, and you can find it all over the Netherlands. Literally, it's so good. Do yourselves a favor, check out a Surinamese restaurant when you're in Amsterdam. Number seven, Amsterdam North. Another up and coming neighborhood is Amsterdam North. It used to be the heart of the Dutch shipbuilding industry. It's recently been taken over by artists and entrepreneurs who formed an artist colony at NDSM, which used to be the largest shipbuilding factory in the world. It's open for visitors, so go check it out. Overall, a great neighborhood. If you were comparing to New York, formerly known as New Amsterdam, Amsterdam North would be like Brooklyn. 
Number eight, brewery. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a brewery and it's in an old windmill. Obviously, everybody knows the Dutch beers like Heineken and Amstel, but this brewery is a craft brewery and it's in a very old Dutch windmill. Definitely worth a visit, if only for a pint outside overlooking the canal. All right, so number nine is King's Day. If you're able to visit Amsterdam in the spring, plan around April 27th. This is King's Day. It's a giant street parade that celebrates the King's birthday. It used to be known as Queen's Day, so if you've heard about that, it's the same holiday, just now they have a king instead of a queen. If you can't visit in the springtime, come in summertime. The biggest festival of the summer is the Pride Festival, which celebrates Amsterdam's long history as one of the most tolerant places on earth. It happens the first week of every August. Number 10, escape the city. The Netherlands is actually the most densely populated country in Europe. Fact. Yeah. And that means that exploring different cities is really easy. Just outside of Amsterdam, you have towns, small towns like Edam, famous for its cheese, Zandam, famous for its windmills, or Rotterdam, famous for being totally flattened and rebuilt with amazing architecture. If you haven't seen our videos from Rotterdam, click here. All right, guys, so those are our top 10 tips on Amsterdam. If you're from Amsterdam or you've been there, leave your own tips in the comment section so other travelers can learn from your advice and vice versa. If you haven't already, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe and turn on notifications if you have not already. If you want to see more top 10 travel guides, you can click up here on this card. And otherwise, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Peace! Peace.